Theatre Phonic presents The Box, written by Zoe Cunningham. Tough day at work. Don't even ask. Oh, poor love. Jackie playing up again? That woman. I don't think I can take another day in the same office as her. If it's not a constant whining about her unimpressive offspring, it's a crisis that she's caused and I have to sort out. What about her transfer to Hull? Has it come through yet? Ah, yes. The fabled transfer to Hull. Rumour had it that she wasn't going to get it. But she did get it. Good old Jackie. The only problem is that it didn't end up quite as expected. What do you mean? It's even worse than if she'd been turned down. They liked her so much at the interview that she's been offered a promotion in London. So she's staying here, and I'll have to work more closely with her. Is there a bottle of wine in the fridge? Should be. Molly was over yesterday and we drank one bottle, but I thought there was another one left. All I can say is I've never been more glad to work from home. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get bored sometimes and I definitely could have got more work done today if I hadn't flaked off it. Oh, no, sorry, that must have been it. Cup of coffee? What I need is a new job. Actually, Liz, I want not to... this again. I'm not self-motivated like you. I, I just can't do my own thing from home. I need a proper job where I need to turn up every day, and if I don't get out of this one, I'll go mad. No, no, I wasn't saying that. I do think that if you spent a bit more time thinking about what you really enjoy, then you might have more success with finding a job that doesn't bore you to tears. But what I was saying... Oh, by the way... I, I brought you a present. Well, I got you one too. I, I mean, I suppose it's not really a present. I No, was... no, no. Me first. Okay. It's rather unusual, but when I was out at lunchtime, I noticed a side street that I didn't recognise. I suppose I must walk past it every day, but I've never noticed it before. It was called Curious Close. A curious name for a curious street, I thought. Yes, ha ha, very funny. Whereabouts was it? There was a jewellery shop on a street just by where you worked. You know where I bought that onyx necklace. Um, I wore it with my cream blouse to your office Christmas party. Jackie said it looked lovely. Never mind. Looking for booze, are you? I'm sorry, what were you saying? Just talking about jewellery. Was this Curious Close, the one that runs off to the right just up past your office? Uh, no, that's Dewson Street. It was further down on the left, just before St Mark's. Oh, I think I know where you mean. I didn't think that was a road, more of a path. Well, anyway, as I went past, I felt the strange urge to go and investigate. I haven't felt like that since I was a boy. Uh, that shrink of yours would probably say I was regressing to protect my delicate inner psyche from the horror of working more closely with Jackie Tanner. We all find ways to withdraw from traumatic experiences. I don't see why you should be any different. Well, it worked, because I trotted off down this close, happy as Larry. I thought I hadn't seen it before, so I looked for a street sign. There is one, right at the end, but it's kind of overgrown with brambles, or some kind of tentacled plant. A wild version of that busy Lizzie you let loose in here once. Hmm, not one of my best ideas. We've got the green fingers of an enthusiastic puppy between us. What did you find down this path then? Close. Well, it turns out that there's a funny little shop down there. I don't see how they can sell anything. They can't get any passing trade. No one can see that they're there. Ooh, jewellery shop. Well, kind of. It was a sort of curiosity shop, I suppose. Is that a real thing? A curiosity shop? Or was it just the title of a book? Anyway, you know, bric-a-brac. Would call itself an antique shop in the Cotswolds. Sounds fabulous. I'll definitely check it out next time I'm over at your office. Oh, we're going to meet for lunch next week. I knew it was your sort of thing straight away. Uh, and you bought me a present? They did have jewellery. Quite a lot. But it looked old and fusty to me. Sometimes you like that kind of stuff. Remember that old ring of your mother's that I thought was hideous and you wouldn't take off for weeks? No, actually, it was hideous. I was just going through a goth phase. Hmm. 
but I'm always a bit worried about buying you jewellery because it's so personal. I still think one of the best decisions of my life was taking you out to choose an engagement ring rather than chancing it. And it ended up being cheaper. Cheapskates. Hold on. Who's the one who just brought you a present? So, jewellery was out. They had some old scarves as well, and dresses that the moths had got to. I didn't think you'd want any of those. You've got enough clothes anyway. Hmm. They had some fabulous leather-bound old books. Ooh, lovely. Did they have any classics? Dickens? That, my love, is exactly what I went to look for. There was this big old bookcase right at the back of the store. I, I was a bit careful around that, let me tell you. It didn't seem to be screwed into the wall. Great way to accidentally bump off a relative, those things. I went past pots and pans. What would you call that? Homewares. I told you, they had everything. The pots weren't in very good nick, either. They all had this same stuff. A kind of black, gelatinous substance congealed at the base of them. It was as if someone had been cooking up industrial quantities of tar and decided to use hundreds of small copper pots rather than a machine. Ugh, sounds revolting. Probably would have come off with a good clean, though. I don't know why people in these second-hand shops don't make more of an effort to clean things up and make them look appealing. They get a much better price for them. Well, maybe it was good for us they didn't. What do you mean? Maybe I wouldn't have been able to afford your present if there'd been a fancy pants antique shop. Maybe I wouldn't have gone in. Yes, okay. It was more of a theoretical point. So I had a look at the books, and guess what? Hmm... No, I mean it. Guess. Each one was a beautiful, ancient copy of Great Expectations, and in every single one, every fourth page was mysteriously and inexplicably missing, rendering them absolutely useless. Nice try. It's even more peculiar than that. More peculiar? None of them were in English. Oh, you mean like they were foreign textbooks or something? Foreign novels? Oh, sounds saucy. Did they have any pictures? No, they weren't foreign novels. They weren't foreign. They were not human books. They were tomes of an alien civilization. What? Well, okay, perhaps that's going too far. Uh, but they didn't seem to be any language that I knew. Not in our alphabet, but it also wasn't Chinese or Arabic, and it didn't look like Sanskrit or an Indian language. How exciting! Is that what you got me then? No. Oh. Is, is that what you would have wanted? No. I, I just thought, what's the point if you won't be able to read it? It all sits on a shelf gathering dust. Well, gathering more dust. They already had quite a bit. No, as I was looking through the books at the back, I caught a glimpse of this. Right in the corner at the back of the shop. Oh. A box. Not just any box. There was a separate table set apart in the corner. Everywhere else in the shop, things had been piled sky high, clutter everywhere, but the box sat on this table in the corner on its own, like they had created a shrine to it, or like it had an invisible force field around it. And I thought, you know, you could put your jewellery in it. Oh, thank you, Simon. It's lovely. It's really kind of you. Oh. What is it? Well, how'd you get it open? There's a, there's a catch here, but no. Give it to me. I didn't have time to open it in the shop. And I suddenly remembered that I was on my lunch break and needed to get back. I still didn't get back in time, though. I was held up talking to Mr. Teabeekfleef. I think that's how you pronounce it. Mr. Teabeekfleef? He was an odd man, too. Kind of matched his name. He had this kind of green aura around him. Well, not an actual light or anything, of course, but he was kind of green, in essence, round the edges. Maybe it was just the lighting in the shop. Maybe I looked green to him, and he didn't make any noise. He would be in one part of the shop, and then suddenly in another. Perhaps I just wasn't paying attention. Hmm. I thought we were having a nice chat, but it seems like he was just trying to distract me from finding out the bloody box was broken. Maybe if I get a chisel, I can wedge it open and... But was he really called Mr. Teepeekfleef? Yes. Isn't that, uh, what I just said? What's so surprising about that? This is so strange. Hmm? 
Simon, you know how I said that I had a present for you? Well, not really a present. Oh, yes. Nice. Go on. Well, it's not a present present, like your lovely, slightly faulty box, but I was passing the job centre on my way home, and I know how you're always going on about how you need to get something new, and, well, I, I saw this. I thought it looked interesting and that maybe it was time for you to just give something, anything, a go to get out of that place where you are. You're stuck. That's really sweet of you, Liz. Thanks. No, but look at the contact name to call. At the bottom. Mr. Teabeekfliv. Good job I spoke to him or I would never have been able to pronounce that. Where did you say you got this, Liz? Just at the job centre. It was on their outside notice board. Well, I say it was on their outside notice board, but actually I was just going over to look when a shortish chap in a long black Mac surprised me out of nowhere, brushed past me rather carelessly and pushed me into the board. I was just recovering myself and I noticed the flyer on the floor. I must have knocked it off the board. Well, what a coincidence. There can't be more than one Mr. Teepeak Fleet living in the area. Can there? Do you think he has a brother? I suppose he would be Mr. T. Beakfleef too. That would still be a big coincidence. And hold on, what's this? Oh, there's some kind of decoration on the flyer. It's not very good, really. They did not pay a professional designer. This might sound mad, Liz, but it looks to me like a typeset version of the alien language that was in all the books in the bookshop. Yes, it does sound mad. Are you saying aliens placed the advert? No, but... Um, uh, it must be a coincidence. Or overactive imagination. Anyway, I don't see how confidential filing and classification can possibly relate to curiosities and ancient artefacts. Maybe he wants you to do some kind of checks on the items that people take in for his shop. Um, like what? I don't know. Some kind of vetting or checking them against Wikipedia. The flyer says, no experience required, so it can't be anything too difficult. Oh, Simon, wouldn't that be an amazing job? Maybe I'll go for it. Hold on, I thought it was my present. Only joking. I think I will go for it. And I suppose if it is the same Mr. T. Beakfleet, I can ask him how to get the box open. Or if not, I can at least ask for a refund. Does it give any other details about the job? Wanted. Highly ambitious and adaptable employee to work for our new enterprise. Must be completely trustworthy and not too inquisitive. The job is to work on a confidential classification and filing an object acquisition. No experience necessary. Available part-time or full-time. Night shifts available. Object acquisition? You don't think he nicks that stuff, do you? I'm sure it must mean talking to buyers. You know, that sort of thing. It sounds right up my street. So do you like it as a present then? It's not as good as the box. I love it. I'll apply straight away. What's the email address? Hmm, It doesn't seem to be one, just a phone number. Oh dear, and I think that might be wrong. It's only got eight digits. He's not very technically literate, your Mr. T. Peak Fleef, is he? What's the number? I'll give it a go. Three, four, three, six, double, six, double, two. Three... Four, three, six, 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 double two. I'll give the box another go in a bit. Perhaps I won't mention it until I know that I've got the job. Well, if you get through. Um, it's ringing. Ah, yes, hello. My name is Simon Montrose and I'm calling about the job. I'm calling about the job offer. The job offer that was posted in the job centre in Dulwich. It's no good. I can't understand their language. I don't even know what language it was. What did it sound like? It was... it was kind of mesmerising. Hmm. I almost felt like I could understand it towards the end. Maybe I'll call them back. What? What for? You just said they were speaking an unintelligible language. Uh, No, good, good point, love. It won't up. I guess I'm stuck with Jackie then. Simon, maybe Mr. T. Peakfleef is out and it's just his assistant and they can't speak English. 
you should try again tomorrow. Or maybe even just pop into the shop and that way you'll look keen and, and they'll know you've got initiative. No, no, no. I, I don't think I want to apply after all. There was something rather strange. Hello? Yes, of course, Mr. T. Peakfleet. He's right here. I'll just put him on for you. Go on, Simon. It's a great opportunity. Hello? Yes, uh, hello, Mr. T. Peakfleet. Yes, that's right. I did call about the job. I think I must have spoken to your assistant. I couldn't understand. Oh, right. Thank you very much. Yes, that would be amazing. 12.30? I did want to ask, though, uh, where are you both from? I didn't even recognise... Yes. Okay, thank you. See you tomorrow. Well? I've got an interview. Yes! Tomorrow. I can pop out on my lunch break. I'll tell Jackie Tanner I'm buying you some more jewellery. And where are they from? He didn't say. Was it rude of me to ask? I, I hope that they don't hold it against me at the interview. Hold on. How did he know your name? I must have mentioned it to his assistant when I rang before. Maybe the assistant wasn't as useless as I thought. Y yes, I was wrong about this job. All wrong. It will be brilliant, and I'm going to get it. Yes! Go, Simon! Bum. Bum. Would you like to get to know more about the people behind Theatrephonic, the writers, the actors and directors? Well, now you can. Our Patreon members have the opportunity to ask questions which our creatives will then answer, if I can get hold of them. Find out everything you want to know about the people behind the characters. Visit patreon.com forward slash theatrephonic for more information. That's patreon.com forward slash theatrephonic. On with the play. Bum. Bum. Oh, you're late. Everything okay? Oh, how did it go, the interview? Not well. Au contraire. I, Simon Montrose, am a newly appointed confidential classification assistant. In fact, I started today, and I'm damn well going to have a glass of wine to celebrate. Unless you've been knocking it back with Molly again. I have been flat out all day finishing the article about employment law changes for Legal Weekly. I didn't even have time to have lunch. I'll join you in that glass of wine. There's a bottle of Prosecco in the fridge. I got it, just in case you had good news. Well, actually, I thought it could do either way. So not working that hard, then. But hold on, you can't have started today. What about your notice period? <laughs> Jackie would never have let you off without working it out. And uh, as you'd know if you'd read my article, workers actually have fewer rights today than they did 50 years ago. Oh, start at the beginning, Simon. Uh, yes, of course. I, I might take a look at your article a little later. So, from the beginning, you say. <clears throat> this morning just seemed like an ordinary day when Simon Montrose packed his briefcase and got on the train towards London. Simon. Little did he know what adventure lay before him. Oh, all right. I went into work as normal. Jackie wasn't there, so I didn't need to tell her anything about what I was doing. I finished the report that she's been banging on about, and I started the platelets interview before I left for lunch. Oh, I suppose I didn't turn it off. I wonder whether it's still running. Oh, and my briefcase is still there. What? I left my interview at 12.20 to get there in good time. I didn't take anything, because what would I need? It's not a job requiring any particular equipment. I was just expecting to be asked a few questions. And? What happened? What kind of questions did he ask? Did you meet the assistant from on the phone? Well, uh, no. What do you mean, no? He didn't ask me any questions. Well, he did ask me one, I suppose. He offered me the job and asked whether I would like to start immediately, and I said yes. The assistant wasn't there. It looks like he works on his own. I, I hope I haven't displaced someone. Yes to starting immediately? 
were you thinking? I don't... I don't know. It all seems a bit hazy now. But it was something along the lines of... You know what, Simon? You just need to live a little. You're always following everyone else's rules, and what good has that done you? It's time for you to go with the flow and just see what happens. You're always telling me I should loosen up a bit, so I just said yes, and that was the end of it. That's not what I meant. I meant buy a floral shirt or leave the washing up for two days, not walk out of your job without telling anyone. Oh, never mind. What did you do then? Oh, well, I started work. Doing what? Um, well, it's, it's kind of specialised. Don't be ridiculous, Simon. I'm not going to be fogged off by something like that. Your current job, well, I suppose it's your previous job now. We'll come back to that later. Your previous job was very specialised and you told me all about that. I'm not dim. OK, well, I'll try to explain. It's just quite hard to picture it now that I'm not in the shop anymore. There was a study wasn't there, about how memories are triggered by being in similar circumstances to- Simon! Yes, sorry. Uh, let me get my head straight. So I classify things. I was given a choice of classifying the books or the gloopy copper pots. Remember them. I don't like the pots. There's something about them that's incredibly distasteful and they kind of smell Somehow like a butcher, or... No, like that time we went to visit your parents, and they thought it would be appropriate to take us on a day trip to an abattoir. Maybe it's the copper. Ew. So obviously I chose the books. Obviously. And what does classifying them actually mean? I, I don't think I'm 100% sure yet. Okay, I, I have a master ledger. It's massive, and just as dusty as the rest of the books. The Master Ledger already has an entry for each book, and I need to check every page of every book in the shop against the Master Ledger, and note down the category and any errors, omissions, or damage to the books. Oh, that sounds quite fun. Did you enjoy it? Uh, there's just one rub, it's all in their alien language. Oh, but you don't speak their language. Oh, what is it, anyway? Did you find out? I don't see how this can possibly work. You must be the worst employee ever. They must find you even more frustrating than Jackie Tanner does. Are you sure you'll keep this job? Oh, yes, I'm getting quite the hang of it. I don't really understand what it all means, but somehow I'm finding it easy enough to see which symbol matches which and what goes where. It's strange because I was terrible at languages at school. And then what? Then I came home. What, you just categorise books all afternoon with no break and no more chats to Mr. T. Peak Fleef and then you came home? Um, yes, I suppose I did. What's the time again? It feels like only a moment ago that I started. Pour us another Prosecco, Liz, and let's get a takeaway. I'm exhausted. <laughs> what did you say? I said, let's get a Chinese. Oh, come on, Liz. I'm knackered. Liz? Are you in? I saw the car, so I'm guessing you're here somewhere. Or is it bridge night? Yes, yes, I'm here, Simon. I've been waiting for you for ages. It's so late. What are you talking about? It's not that late. You'll work an extra hour or so when it's needed. I remember when you stayed at practically all night finishing that copy for the Dulwich Hotel brochure. That was once. You've not been home before 7.30pm ever since you started that new job. Anyway, I'm so pleased you're back. Oh, that's nice. It's the strangest thing, but I felt absolutely awful all day. It started this morning when I was doing some housekeeping. Gosh, it must have been a weird day. Oh yes, ha ha, Simon. Although, if I'm totally honest, I think I was procrastinating about that article for the Times. Anyway, this isn't about my work habits. Go on. Yes, so I thought I would have a dust. A dust? Yes, Simon. I do dust occasionally. Not 
regularly, but occasionally, and I decided I would do some this morning. I thought if I dusted first and then I vacuumed, that would mean that... What did you say? Uh, a chew? I, I think I'm coming down with something. I don't need you being weird as well, Simon. I've had enough already with that box. What's the box got to do with anything? That's what I'm telling you. I was dusting the shelf, you know, where we left it, and it wasn't there. Oh. Maybe I moved it. Well, Simon, it wasn't there, and then it was there again. Maybe you moved it. Simon, I didn't touch it. I made up my mind to dust it as a priority. I feel unclean about it, like it needs a good scouring somehow, and and when I went to do it, it wasn't there. And then when I looked all over the house to try and see where it was hiding... It's an inanimate box, Liz. I don't think it was hiding. Is it? Anyway, I was trying to find where it was hiding, and there it was, back on the shelf where it wasn't when I first looked for it. Zintich! Enough! Simon! It's an empty box, Liz. What on earth did it do? I don't know if it is empty, you know. I kept my eye on it after that, and I'm sure I saw it jumping out of the corner of my eye. I wish I could get into it. Did you start on the booze early today? Or maybe it's early onset something. Thanks for the support, Simon. That's brilliant. Well, that went downhill quickly from, I'm so pleased you're home. What I was going to say was that I'm pleased to be home too. Are you? Is the job not working out? Maybe if you're quick and deferential, you can get your old job back. I'm not going back to that soul-sapping job. Ever. Which one? The old one or the new one? Jackie Tanner. I'm not going back. I like the new job. I don't know why you're so down on it all of a sudden. It's just that... What? I... I don't know. I don't know, Les. Can I have a drink? Hello, please can I speak to Simon Montrose? Simon Montrose, he works for your employer in the shop with you. And in fact, he shouldn't be working for you at all this late. It's gone 10 p.m. It's in contravention of the European Working Hours Directive. Oh, never mind. Oh, for goodness sake, please, can I speak with Mr. T. Peak Fleef, your boss, because I need someone who can speak English. Well, what time do you call this? What do you mean? Is it late? Is it late? It's 10.15. Even when Jackie had a report due, you never worked this late in your last job. And I can't get hold of anyone who speaks English to even ask where you are. It's absolutely ridiculous, Simon. Oh, please don't start. I'm really very tired. I enjoy this new job. I do. I wouldn't be doing anything else in the whole world. It's amazing, but I I can hardly keep my eyes open. Well, it doesn't look that amazing from where I'm standing. Oh, but it is, Liz. It is. And I brought you another present. Did you? Yes. Remember the box? Of course I remember the box, Simon. Now creeping me out daily ever since you bought it. I am not going to forget the box. Well, now you can open it. I found a key. What do you mean you found a key? How on earth would you know it fit? And I'm not sure there's a keyhole anyway. It's the right key. Try it, I know. I'm not sure I do want to open the box. I think I might rather you just took it back to the shop and gave it back to Mr. T. Peakfleet, or threw it in the bin. All of this strangeness started with the box, Simon. 
I thought it was a sweet present, but I've changed my mind. I wish you'd never found that shop and never bought it. Oh, don't be like that. Come on, let's open it. And it will make everything better and you'll see just what a great job I have. Don't, Simon. <sighs> Simon, are you listening? <laughs> Simon, stop mucking about. <laughs> Simon! 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 What? 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 You have been listening to The Box, written by Zoe Cunningham, directed by Emmeline Brayfield, with Zoe Cunningham as Liz, and Herowood Mills as Simon, produced by Cat on a Piano Productions. For a full list of the music included in the play, please see our show notes. The theatrephonic theme tune was composed by Jackson Pentland, performed by Jackson Pentland, Holly Fife Taylor, and Emmeline Brayfield. For more information about the Theatrephonic podcast, go to catonapiano.uk forward slash theatrephonic. Tweet or Instagram us at theatrephonic or visit our Facebook page. If you enjoy Theatrephonic and would like to get more content, please consider becoming a patron by going to patreon.com forward slash theatrephonic. Please don't forget to rate and review. Thank you for listening. Bye.